Most people are aware that many years before portraying Paulie Walnuts Gaultieri on the hit TV show The Sopranos, actor Tony Sirico was a criminal connected with the Colombo crime family. Before being sent to prison in 1971, the prosecution stated that Sirico was a menace to society who had once threatened to carve his initials onto a man's forehead. Let's check him out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today we're going to take a quick look at the criminal past of mob-connected actor Tony Sirico. Tony Sirico was born Gennaro Anthony Sirico Jr. on July the 29th, 1942, growing up predominantly in the Bensonhurst area of Brooklyn. On the streets, he was known as Junior. Sirico would recall about growing up in Bensonhurst. I was a pretty tough kid. I grew up in Bensonhurst, where there were a lot of mob-type people. I watched them all the time. Watched the way they walked, the cars they drove, the way they approached each other. There was an air about them that was very intriguing, especially to a kid. Sirico was first arrested at the age of seven, stealing nickels from a newsstand. By his early 20s, he was married with a pregnant wife and worked some construction. But by his own admission, his life spiralled out of control when he fell in love with another woman. Sirico would state in an article in the Los Angeles Times, My life was wrecked. I mean wrecked. I forgot I had a wife, a pregnant wife. I forgot I had kids. All I could see was this girl's face, and what a face. I was madly in love. I was very unstable. I wasn't thinking right, so I hooked up with these guys and all of a sudden I'm a stick-up artist. I stuck up every nightclub in New York. Over the course of Sirico's criminal career, he had 28 arrests and two convictions. One for armed robbery and another for an illegal weapons charge. Being a stick-up artist, Sirico says that he was always armed. He stated, I was a pistol packing guy. The first time I went away to prison, they searched me to see if I had a gun and I had three of them on me. They'd ask why I was carrying, and I'd say, I live in a bad neighbourhood. It was true. In our neighbourhood, if you weren't carrying a gun, it was like you were the rabbit during rabbit hunting season. One day, Sirico was sat on the steps of St Brendan's Church in Brooklyn. He was kissing a girl when he was shot twice, once in the leg and once in the back. He recalls, I was kissing his girl. These three guys from the Bronx drive up and said, Hey Junior, which was my nickname, and I was in no position to do anything because I had my tongue deep down in her soul. So they go boom and shoot me in the leg. When I saw the blood all over my new white suit, I just went crazy. So instead of running away, I start running toward their car. All I could think of was how they ruined my suit. Luckily, they stepped on the gas and pulled away. But as soon as I turned around, they shot me again, this time in the back. In a 1989 interview, which can be seen on YouTube, Junior Sirico states that the man who shot him was Irish. There are unconfirmed rumours that this man was an associate of the Lucchese crime family. And after the shooting, a sit-down was held between the Lucchese's and members of the Colombo family who Sirico was friendly with. It is alleged that future Colombo family captain Giacomo Jimmy Brown Clemenza then put Sirico on record with him as an associate for his own protection. Again, I must stress that this sit-down is an unconfirmed rumour. It is unclear if the girl that Sirico was kissing is the girl he left his pregnant wife for, but that is the general assumption. So now Sirico is allegedly a formal associate of then Colombo soldier Jimmy Brown Clemenza. For his armed robberies, Sirico would state that he would wear disguises. He recalls, When I would rob a place, I'd be moustached up, wigged up, everything. He would receive the first of his two convictions for one such robbery. He had stolen $30,000 from one location and decided to try the same place again the following week. However, he states that he was wearing the same wig as he had done for the first robbery. He had meant to change it and wear a brown one instead of the blonde one. On entering the location, he was recognised and he was promptly arrested. He received a 13-month sentence, which he started serving in 1967. 
Junior Sirico's second conviction came after an arrest on February 27, 1970. Court transcripts state that Sirico had been under investigation by the authorities for a period of time and that he was being indicted for extortion, coercion and possession of a gun as a felony. The charges also included threats that Sirico made to a nightclub owner by the name of John Addison. Addison owned a discotheque on 59th Street in Manhattan. The court transcript states that Sirico entered that discotheque on several occasions, refused to pay at the door, refused to pay for any services or products he received in the discotheque, and when he was confronted by Mr. Addison and asked to pay, and ordered to pay, he told him, Mr. Addison, that he doesn't pay any place, that he's Junior Sirico, and that Mr. Addison better learn how to give him the respect he deserves, otherwise he knows what to do with Mr. Addison. He told Mr. Addison that he knew how to take care of guys like Mr. Addison. You hit them over the head with a baseball bat, and they come around. The prosecution stated that Tony Sirico was an antisocial character, who had been virtually unemployed for the last couple of years, yet he drives in expensive cars, wears expensive clothes. The transcript shows that prior to his arrest, Sirico was aware of the attention he was receiving from the police. He returned to see John Addison and threatened the nightclub owner. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to carve my initials in your forehead. You put those guys on me, I'm going to take care of them. You want to play with guns? We got guns. We're going to shoot them. There's going to be shots fired. There's going to be a war. I have an arsenal of weapons and an army of men and I'm going to use them. And after I take care of those guys, I'm going to come back here and carve my initials in your forehead. You better learn a lesson. You better show me the respect I deserve. At the sentencing, the prosecution called Tariko a menace to society. Junior Tariko was then sentenced to a maximum four years in prison. Famously, while serving his sentence, Tony Sirico caught the acting bug after seeing a performance by a group of ex-con actors. He would remember of this time, These guys went from joint to joint. They made me laugh and they also gave me hope. When I watched them, I said to myself, I can do that. When I got out of the can, I called up an old actor friend of mine named Richie Castellano and told him I wanted to be an actor. Richard Castellano famously playing Peter Clemenza in The Godfather. After coming out of prison, it's said that one of his early acting gigs was an uncredited part in The Godfather Part 2. In a blink or you miss it role, Sirico was a gangster in the famous scene where Frank Pentangeli is nearly strangled to death in a bar. This scene, based on real events, when Larry Gallo was ambushed and nearly garroted by the likes of Sally D'Ambrosio and Carmine Persico. Colombo crime family mobsters who Tony Sirico would have been all too familiar with. Sirico would go on to have small roles in many films, including Goodfellas, The Pickup Artist, and Miller's Crossing. He even struck up a friendship with Woody Allen, who he worked with on several occasions, including the 1993 film Bullets Over Broadway. Woody Allen and Tony Sirico grew up in the same area around the same time. A conversation between the two appears in the Daily News after an interview by reporter Dennis Hamill. My sister says you're a legend in the old neighbourhood, Woody says. Yeah, well, I had you checked out too, Tony says, smiling as he toys with his prop pistol. I asked Joe Cuz and Mike Ballou, Andy the Whip, the big guys from the old neighbourhood, about you. They says not only are you good people, but you was a hell of a ball player in your day too. No one ever believed that about me, says Alan, a veteran of the 70th Precinct's PAL teams. I was just a street kid from East 14th Street and Avenue K, a good second baseman, okay at hoops. Me? I'm from Coney and K, Sirico says, and I was good at baseball bats. The two men laugh as Sirico recalls his past as a neighbourhood enforcer. Sirico would eventually land the role as Paulie Walnuts Galtieri in the hit TV show The Sopranos. In 1999, the FBI were carrying out surveillance of Colombo soldier Jerry Greenice Clemenza, son of Jimmy Brown Clemenza, the man that Tony Sirico used to work for. The FBI then saw Tony Sirico and fellow Sopranos actor Vincent Pastor attending a Colombo family Christmas party. When later quizzed about his attendance and his connections with Jerry Clemenza, Sirico would say, I know them, 
I know everybody. I've been around. I don't remember this party. If I was there, I wasn't hanging out with nobody. I haven't seen these guys in a hundred years, he added. I haven't seen the kid Jerry in a thousand years. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.